eating p- is not what makes people gay. There are two really important truths that exist at the same time. Queerness has nothing to do with behavior. On the other side, it is connective to talk about all the things that are super gay. Astrology is super gay, right? Those things aren't actually innately gay, but gay people tend to like to do them, so we enjoy (laughs) saying those things. Some people will go their entire lives without having gay sex and it doesn't make them any less gay. Look, people get to self-define, right? If a bi person and a straight man don't feel like the sex they're having is gay, then fine, it's not gay. And that sucks, honestly. (laughs) This Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I am in Washington, D.C. I think a few tickets are left. Come see me if you think this podcast is funny. Man, stand-up comedy, it will leave you in pain. It is, it is that much laughter. Your abs are going to hurt. Your face is going to hurt. You're going to get all the dopamine and the endorphins. Come with a friend. Come alone. It's a great time, and I do meet and greets afterwards. And I'll be coming to Phoenix in February, Denver, and Bloomington, Indiana in May. AshleyGavin.com. If you didn't hear your city, go get on the mailing list. I will be coming. I have a very rigorous touring schedule coming up for 2022. And if you want to see me on Zoom, you can do that via patreon.com slash WHGS. I live stream my New York City comedy shows and you can head in for free uh, on our um, live podcast. So go check that out, guys. And then this week on this week's episode, Casey Tanner is back. You asked her your queer sex therapy questions. She answers them. She's a dream, as always. What an incredible human being. I'm so excited about this episode. And Kate roasts me so fucking hard. It's hysterical. I was I was in rare form on this episode guys and i'm sorry but i'm also not sorry because it's it's hilarious you know how casey makes me and also let's get kate to 10k let's do it it'll really help uh with their career the kate sisk on instagram enjoy this episode you little bottoms you you bottom for this episode and you bottom hard this is so f-ing cool <laughs> i've worked my whole f- 10 years to record on my iphones <laughs> out of an apartment <laughs> With no clapper, just my hands, and a small boy that I now own in the corner. That's, no. I do feel, I do feel, how'd you like the cookies? They were so good. Right? I really, I was very low on blood sugar. So before, are you diabetic? No, but I just, I hadn't eaten since breakfast, and they gave me a glass of Prosecco at my haircut, so I was like, I need to eat something. Yeah, a fancy haircut. <laughs> I know. Is that free? Yeah. That is, that's a fancy Nothing haircut. is free, though. I probably gave them something. I don't, I don't know what, but. Well, your money. <laughs> Did they take pictures of you? They didn't take, they told me to tag them okay. in everything I do from now on. <laughs> in everything in you do? In everything okay. I do, they have to so be So you tagged. got free Prosecco, and then they got your likeness and image in perpetuity. Right, <laughs> for the rest of forever. Wait, this is creating first... an interesting scenario is that the sun the, the sun. sun is hitting a building over there which is this how i see in. the sunset in new york city it reflects on a building <laughs> from the other side ah my beautiful view of the sunset you know what that building used to be the twin towers <laughs> not today kate or ashley is it possible <laughs> the only two 9-11 references that we've made have both been on casey's episode uh, what how, do i bring out of how you how is it possible did you do that on purpose <laughs> i didn't but i don't know <laughs> something <laughs> about me just <laughs> but it was me last time there's just something about you that reminds people of 9-11 no <laughs> I, I was know gonna to make some that. horrible jokes yeah. no, but look at that building over there is the old uh, jehovah's witness building and, and i think they just sold it i don't scientology or maybe they all bought you know it's all scientology no no uh yeah and i'm uh i'm obsessed with that i love cults i think they're like super interesting mm-hmm. is jehovah's witness a cult yes and so is we're having gay sex okay, so fair. in that way <laughs> yeah jehovah's Welcome. witness is a- like a huge cult is it like depends who you ask yeah no it's a cult they take people's <laughs> they they have all the it's a cult there's all the signs of a cult yeah, cult. yeah. they take people's money and they put okay it so their you've got you've got like a webster's dictionary definition and you are checking off all the boxes and it's, it's a, cult. a cult okay yeah i would say it's a huge cult <laughs> And you know what we happens when, when cults get big enough is they become religions and people believe that. But I don't think that there are certain sects of like, not all sects of Christianity and Judaism and whatnot are cults. I don't agree with them. 
Let's go back to 9-11. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, where are we going with this? <sighs> well, I'm excited. This is our first episode ever with Alex in the room producing. Yeah. We love Alex. Is now the time to share about Alex? I think it is. Alex, okay, listener. <sighs> Alex is a cis straight white guy, and I need you... I need you to understand that he was the best for the job and that by hiring him and calling him my little bottom bitch, that's what I call him. It's a corrective emotional experience. (laughs) Yes, exactly. We're actually doing the work by having Alex here listening to me. I think so. He's sitting in the corner smiling as you're saying. (laughs) He's just kind of looking at you nervous. (laughs) <laughs> he's got his notepad out take this down you little bottom bitch no oh i can't alex do it. is no. a little bottom bitch no write that 500 he times he is no. writing it <laughs> <laughs> oh man you need an alex cam we do need, an, need alex an alex cam. cam alex cam reminds me of like we've set up the eagle cam and you look it's in the nest and you watch all the little eagles hatch from from their eggs and then the parents bring them stuff to eat and then they start flying yeah 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 but instead of bringing him stuff to eat i go alex i got some sex oil in the mail you want it (laughs) it's free you want some free sex oil I, I declined the sex oil. I actually, I did not. <laughs> you were offered it as well. Yeah, yeah. I was not offered you it. You want the sex oil? I'll take it. Well, it'll be, okay. Oh, God. What was that? Not, she looked directly at looked, my genitals. You did. No, <laughs> you went, no, no, no. Actually, you went, you want the sex oil? Well, that was Freudian and subconscious because I didn't even know that I did that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I keep mentioning 9-11 because I want two big penises, you know? Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, that makes sense. It does. That checks out. <laughs> anyway, I'll stop bringing this it up. This is a I, weird I start. I think we were all all kind of like kind of odd coming into the. You gave me two pats on the back when I walked in and you said, I don't know what to What's do up? with you. I don't know what to do with you. I don't know what to do with you. What do I do with you, Casey? What do I, I, I do with you? No, I don't. I don't know what to tell you. Because like, I feel like for my own listener. This is for your own protection. Yeah. So why am I here? You. <laughs> You, you fucking asked to be here. No, I was. Okay, you know what? This is I, our first I, fight. I, I, no, this is our second fight. Um, are you about to blow the whistle? I on am us? about to blow the whistle. I'm gonna blow the whistle on cancelable offenses, and also when I get so uncomfortable that I feel like I need help. <laughs> here Can we go. Alex step in? You, okay. You no, no. Okay. He stays out of this. We do not mention our son in our in in, in, in our arguments. We keep our children out of yes, this. No. We will always love you. We love you so this much, This is Alex. not your fault. This has nothing to do with you. This is mommy and mommy talking right now. <laughs> mm. You want it? You, I said you, the, the episode came out. Yeah. You felt incredible. Oh, I incre- definitely want to be here. Oh, okay. I want to be here. Yeah. I just, I was like, okay, so how do you, how do you protect yourself from me while also being in love with you? Interviewing me. <laughs> <laughs> A light whistle. <laughs> this is going to get worse. <laughs> your teeth look nice. You always tell me my teeth look nice. You have such a great smile. You've got a great smile, too. Yeah, I do. You, yeah, and you always say that as well. Well. And my- then I tell you, oh, your hair. <laughs> Kate, your Kate, teeth are you look lovely. So dis- you look disgusted. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not disgusted. What are you? Confused and scared. <laughs> <laughs> are we going to be okay? Yeah, I think we're going to okay. be okay. I think are so you worried? Too. I was worried with the greeting I got today, but now I feel better. Okay. Now that I understand what was behind it. Yeah. Well, I also was in the middle of doing my eyebrows. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) We're better now. Okay. Yeah. You love a long hug. I do like a long hug. That's what makes me know, like, we're happy to see each other. I just, like, don't know what to do. Yeah. You know? It's it's a complicated situation. Yeah, but it's also, like, completely uncomplicated. Like, right. I am, you are totally unavailable true. to me. <laughs> <laughs> and in that way, it's completely uncomplicated. <laughs> and so, like, I I have... To, that's the part that I... <laughs> that is my water bottle, Kate. <laughs> I'm, I'm moving it so that I can get to my water so that I can breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! But I'm I am really glad that you're here. Yeah. Your last episode was a fan favorite. Oh. People loved it, and so we're glad. To, I'm gl- so glad to have you back. And I was so happy that you like had a good time. Oh, I had the best time. I saw you got some questions today. We got some questions. I'm nervous. 
Why? I don't know. This is your domain. No, it's in there. Yeah, that's true. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Alex, Alex was very good and wrote down the questions for us. So we'll get into them. And I think I'm going to start. Well, I don't know if this banter was effective. This was like a wildly chaotic opening. This is going to be a wildly chaotic episode. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Are we keeping the 9-11? <laughs> is the 9-11 staying in? The 9-11 this time was, was much less egregious than it's last time. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> fine whatever i get it you think kate's funnier than i am and i'm totally fine with that don't pit me against our child <laughs> See, i can our make jokes child, about 9 11 because i'm nine that was Fuck! <laughs> shit i'm missing something i'm bombing casey i'm bombing <laughs> it fell hard it fell hard it, it was like it almost fell as hard as... We don't even have to do it. We, we do. Oh, do no. This is the point in my... Do you my, get the my, joke, Casey, without us saying it, that yes. it fell as hard? Yes. Oh, oh God. Joke. There we oh. go. Great. <laughs> okay, let's stop. Okay. Let's stop. Okay, it's done. Listener, that last joke was not a 9-11 joke. You don't know what it was. <laughs> Lots of things fall hard, like my heart. <laughs> For an unavailable woman. I deserve to hear you profess your love because I bombed. Every time you have a joke bomb, I get to profess my love to Casey. <laughs> if right. we have to sit through your discomfort, you I have think to this sit is going mine. to be my worst episode yet. Um. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you you are you're a gem of a human. I definitely don't know what to do with you. Putting up some walls, possibly. I feel it, but well, that's I respect it. No, they'll come down. Okay. <laughs> I'm the worst. Yeah, you're the worst. Yeah. Anyway, intros. We're in the apartment. We're not having gay sex. Ooh. I'm never having gay sex with Casey. I think I've learned that. Don't look at me like like my facial expression's gonna give you a yes or a no. <laughs> Casey is a wonderful guest. Queer sex therapist, the queer sex therapist on Instagram. No, queer, queer sex, sex therapist. therapy. Therapy. You are you run a huge queer affirming therapy practice. practice? Yes, I fucking nailed that. You got it. Yeah. I didn't even study that before I went in. Oh, that's so not the correct one. Oh, oh. Kate, what are you looking for? I'm bombing. <laughs> Here's how I really feel. <laughs> Look how freaking hairy my ankle is. I was worried about how hairy mine were. I don't care. I would never care about that. Good. Whatever you want to do. Oh, it's very hairy. <laughs> you can't do that. Why? <laughs> Why can't I do that? <laughs> we lost her. All right. You just stroked my leg hair. What? That has to be a violation. I stroked my... Uh, what's wrong with that? Is it too intimate? Yes, Kate says. <laughs> Kate nodded. It was so intimate. Okay. That was the loveliest leg hair stroke I've ever had. Oh, I, I, I love body one. hair. I love body hair. Really? Yeah, I love it. Huh. I didn't shave my armpits for years. I like shave my legs like twice a year. You love it on yourself or other people? Um, I think both. I mean, like queer body hair in particular. It, there's a difference. You, you know? Don't, you don't love body hair on, a, on Alex? I would be less excited about body hair on alex you hear that you have to go shave now <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i don't like it on myself so what happened just working really hard you have been working really hard yes now hopefully with alex here i'll be able to shave <laughs> i'm not even kidding like that's the level of yeah dysfunction in my life yeah but it's getting better i had my birthday yesterday look at this shirt that kate had commissioned for me are of you my serious cats. i was wondering Okay, that's fucking great. Isn't that so cool? Kate, yeah. best gift ever. It's really, Thank truly you, from... one of the best gifts I've ever gotten. And some listeners sent some gifts and that was like super nice. Oh my gosh. So that was really, really cool. Thank you for making my birthday so special and writing me the kind notes. It was truly one of the best birthdays of my life. Everyone's been writing in that they're worried about me. This podcast is on like a two month delay. Why are, wait, why are they worried about you? I've kind of been going through a hard time. But there's a delay so people don't know that that I'm doing well. That you're doing well now. And I'm doing very, oh, okay. on my, it is my birthday yesterday and I'm doing very well. And thank you so much for checking in with me. It's so weird because they check in with me after I'm 
feeling better usually <laughs> and everyone's like things seem so great when everything's falling apart <laughs> oh, it's such a oh weird my gosh. it sounds like we need to make this podcast a live program <laughs> yeah that's the only way patreon.com slash whgs let's get back to casey because she's such a special guest okay she's a special guest because she has knowledge and she's an expert yes and we don't have that no <laughs> we are idiots Stupid. we're dumb <laughs> we're just two guys listen listen we're li- just two guys and uh we're talking we're talking <laughs> we're shooting the shit we're, the shit is shot when it comes to us this gay shit it's dead shot. dead dead on the ground dead on, dead on arrival whenever dead i approach <laughs> whenever i approach your door for these recordings it sounds like a frat house in here <laughs> and that's how i know which door it is because you never text me your address i'm following the sound of the frat house. <sighs> anyway, Casey Tanner, queer sex therapist, yeah. and just overall great gal. We're so glad to have you here. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. If you're listening for the first time, Casey was on the uh, show previously, and because she is a pro therapist, this episode, she's going to be answering some of the questions. Yeah. But she has some great dildo content on the previous episode <laughs> that you should definitely go and check out. Um, Intros? Yeah. I am Ashley Gavin. I am a cis gay white woman. She, her pronouns. And as always, my cancel coach to keep me from getting canceled. My best friend. The fat in the chat. Is it shirts? Is it skins? We don't know what team they're playing for. (laughs) That's a listener suggestion. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) Kate Sisk. Hey, everybody. It's me, Kate Sisk, the cancel coach, the fat in the chat. I use any pronouns. I'm a white bisexual lesbian dyke, Ashley's best friend. <laughs> <laughs> My gender of the week as submitted by the listeners is uh, a chocolate bar in your pocket, but you forgot it was there, so oh, it melted. Um, that's so accurate. It's very spot on. It's spot on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Do you mind introducing yeah, yourself? Yeah, yeah. Casey Tanner, she, they pronouns, queer person, white. Yeah. Yeah. And anything... It really sounded like you were applauding for white. <laughs> and as... Wait, can you say it one more time? What? Well, I'm white. <laughs> oh, God. Take a bow. <laughs> Ooh. No, it's just like that. I thought it was the end of your intro, so I applauded. I have a gay sex story. Ooh. I Have I had gay sex this week? Was it in Chicago? I did have sex on the Midwest tour, and I'm so sorry to tell you that. Oh, it's okay. Did you have gay sex this week? I did not. That's awesome. <laughs> I did not have gay sex this week. <laughs> I'm here to hear on? about What's yours. something going on? Just working really hard. Oh, okay. <laughs> Stop looking at me. Okay. Tell us about your gay sex. Well, do you live with your partner? I do. They have a really uh, beautiful apartment nice. in Williamsburg. Oh, nice. Oh, cut that. We don't want people knowing where I live. It's up to you. Oh, okay. No, whatever. Don't <laughs> cut that. Leave it in. <laughs> They're not going to find me with that information. It's true. There's a lot of lesbians in Williamsburg. <laughs> Queer people, whatever. I, 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 the, look, I've been having a good time lately. Yeah. The roster is in good shape without you on it. Mm. Oh my God. <laughs> Tell me about the roster. I can deal with it. Um, I, I met a nice girl and she has availability. That's and it's fantastic. Good. So that's good. Her schedule matches mine very well. Oh, nice. And also, Main Main from the summer. Shout out, Main Main. Back. I don't know. We did okay. make out on the corner in front of a Trader Joe's. Gay. Yeah. yeah. So that might be back. I'm a fan. But I want to talk about this other girl who I, well, I have a queer sex therapy question for yeah, you. Yeah, I got you. This is not actually a queer sex therapy question. <laughs> is it advice about this I'm person? I'm getting advice. This is going to be interesting. Okay. So me and this person, we did not work out. Okay. Basically, as a comedian, look, she's got some things in her life that have been really difficult. So have I. We approach those in fundamentally different ways Mm. because I joke about mine. Mm. And she really feels that some jokes are off limits, like really funny 9-11 jokes, for example. (laughs) Patreon only. I can't tell. What do you think? (laughs) Whatever you want, Ashley. Okay. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> she <laughs> so i was on stage she came to see me at a show i was on stage i did something that she i said a joke that she didn't really like was it about her no it was about me oh. what was it it was related to like my depression and 
Okay. Like that kind of stuff. And so she was like, you shouldn't say that on stage. Yeah, that's, and it's just a f- too much of a fundamental difference. It's just yeah. too much of a fundamental yeah. difference between us. Yeah. And I think from my perspective, I was like, artistically, that's kind of up to me. And if I make yeah. mistakes and I feel the brunt of it from my audience, like, then I hope to learn a lot. Le- you know, like, I hope yeah. that I can handle learning that lesson. But I- I'm the one that decides where that line is. Mm-hmm. Right. And then I think from her perspective, she couldn't separate herself and her story from it mm-hmm. or... I don't want to say it in a negative way. She's entitled to feel that way. I think she's entitled. Well, I think the, I mean, the fundamental difference description is the perfect description. Neither of you are wrong to right. express it the way that you do. It's just way too different. Yeah, it's way too, yeah. exactly. So if you're listening and you have a problem with certain jokes, that is your right. Like, yeah. I don't want listener you to feel but like. But that's not what happened. She didn't say, I didn't like that. That made me feel bad. I think that's an ugly joke. I think that's a offensive joke she said i don't think you should say that yes and that's and where, that to me is where it's like this just isn't gonna work we're comedians so we're like yeah i can't so the thing is obviously she and i are both fucking gay because she gave me a book <laughs> on our first date a what book <laughs> on your first date yeah she brought up she showed up with a book yeah she did look i really like this girl i thought she was funny yeah she's actually uh an artist of a different kind mm. so she brought this book it meant something to her artistically nice. it was all marked up it was her wow. copy of the gayest book of all time which is valencia i don't know if any. I, no i don't it's a very very gay about that's really beautiful yeah to bring that to a first date yeah if any, she must any, have really liked you we had a great conversation going yeah so i gave her a book I gave her my copy, my marked up copy of The War of Art, which if you know me. <laughs> I, I don't know that book. It's a book for artists. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so I gave her my copy of War of Art, which is for basically artists starting out. The book is very much if you I this book is like my Bible. I love it. And I gave her my copy, my marked up copy. Wow. So now I have her copy of Valencia. She is my copy of War of Art. And Uh we had a very firm. This is like when you leave a strap on at a Nexus house. (laughs) And then you have to go get it. (laughs) And if if you've read The War of Art, you know this is like a limited edition 12 inch strap on. What's your advice to me? About the book or just generally? Well, that's the thing. So I want, I already know what my friend advice would be to me, and I'm trying to take it. What is it? Well, if I were talking to a friend, given... Now, the finality of the... You got to get your book back. What? I just feel strongly that you got to get your book back. That's so funny. Was your advice the opposite? I really did not think that you were going to say that. A hundred percent. You got to get it back. So, (laughs) okay. Let let me give one more piece of information. Okay, okay. It was not a pleasant ending. She was very mad at me about the joke. Yeah. Which, you know, I think she is entitled to her feelings. Yeah. But like the breakup was so final. It was very much like... How many times did you go out? Four. Four? But it was like she also lost her father mm. and we're both artists and and so i thought we we had a lot in common yeah yeah and even though i never like saw her as like a girlfriend and i don't think that would have happened i still was like ah we're gonna be great friends so i feel i do feel mm. like kind of sad about yeah. it yeah yeah but and that's why i never brought it up on the pot it just didn't feel like a story to tell but now i have this very juicy interesting piece of it <laughs> so here we are listener anyway this was one of the things that was happening in my kind of rough patch mm, a couple mm. weeks ago so this is not the ballerina no this is not the ballerina mm. okay there's a ballerina okay Ooh. i <laughs> yeah Ooh, yeah Bro. nice nice dude that was good <laughs> was it um so i don't know man it was so final and mm. i and i really hurt her feelings mm. and whether or not i agree with what she said i don't want to hurt anyone's feelings ever Right. So I was like, what is the amount that I would hurt fe- her feelings and put myself through pain to get this book back? And I'm sure she wants her book back. So I was thinking one option is be like, hey, we have books that are valuable to one another. I'm happy to leave my book in the lobby. Or if you would like to do something similar, I'm happy to just swap them. Mm-hmm. But the other part of it is I can order a new copy of this book. And even though I think my annotations are interesting... I don't feel so attached. Mm. You know, like, I think I think I'll be able to reread it and, and find new annotations yeah. that okay. mo- sections that matter to me more. Yeah. Yeah. But then I don't give her the opportunity to get her book back. Mm. So listener, write in. <laughs> what do I do about the book? 
does the book mean something to you beyond it being like a rare copy and the annotations being does it remind you of somebody like it reminds me of a time mm. in my life where i was reading it because things were not good and it, it got with you through that time and it helped yeah so it has that yeah. value but i'm not a big things person yeah. do you I, I mean do you think another copy of the book would sort of mean the same thing to you That's yeah the, of course okay yeah okay I do. so then uh, you don't really need your book back but how strongly do you feel about giving her an opportunity to give her book? That's the thing. I feel yeah. like, I don't know, man. I could see her being like, and she has my book, but I yeah. don't actually know how important it is deep down. Well, she also has the autonomy to ask you for that back. Yeah. Maybe it ended badly, but you didn't say never speak to me again. No, no, right? no, no. So she could ask if it, yeah. if it really mattered. She could do the same process you're doing right exactly. now. And, and can do it in a way where we don't have to see each other. Certainly. You know, there's ways to do that. I'll also say that, I don't know, that it's kind of like a physical manifestation of a short-lived relationship where, like, you each give something to the other person and then mm. you just move on with your lives. That's beautiful. That's well said. Yeah, yeah but I'm pissed. <laughs> I, I don't agree with the... <laughs> so you want to throw the book away and not I, look I'm at getting it. rid of that book. If she, if she doesn't get back to me about the mm. book, I'm getting rid of that book. Mm. I don't want her book. So just around. drop her book off. Can I just place. also say though that if you bring something that's to it, point what, I will. What, what, I'll drop it off at her place. I'll that's just a great leave solution. it in her lobby. Yeah. And then if she wants to do the same with my book, so be it. Yeah, because that joke is a good joke. <laughs> so you take your your book back. Can I? That's the mean part. I just of have me a talking. hot take on on this situation. Yeah, hot take. Hot take. Hot take. If you're bringing something to a first date, you should assume you may not see that again. You know what I mean? You don't bring something you want to keep for the rest of your life and give it to a first date. I'm good. Thank you, though. Most first dates do not end in a second date. Right. Maybe eating while podcasting was a mistake. A mistake, I think. I'm putting mine down. Uh, right in. Casey said something interesting and then we're just like, mm, mm-hmm, mm, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> not the funniest gay sex, but that's my gay sex from this week. An exchange of literature. Yeah. Yeah. The gayest sex, honestly, yeah. at the end of the day. Mm. Especially if you know the book, Valencia. The War of Art is pretty straight. <laughs> it's written by a dude. He talks about, he compares art to war. A dude doing art? Gay. Get out. <laughs> Remember the Macklemore song? Did <laughs> 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 you really just successfully read <laughs> reference i did macklemore i really did oh well done <laughs> well done macklemore if you're listening <laughs> turns out it's not just your uncle that's gay it's you <laughs> rapping about thrift stores mm. that's pretty gay listener homophobia is real okay and and it's it's stressful it's stressful to be gay. You have a lot going on. You're managing your mean family. You're trying to come out of your closet. You're finding the right size dildo for your partner. You don't have time to manage everything the way straight people manage everything because their lives are just so much simpler. And that means you're probably missing a lot of your unused subscriptions. You're just racking up charges from all those unused subscriptions. You need Truebill, listener. Truebill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions that you don't need, want, or simply forgot about. On average, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill. And I don't know if that's more for gay people, but I have a very unverified feeling that it might be. Because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel, Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in just one tap. And your Truebill concierge is there when you need them to cancel unwanted subscriptions so that you don't have to. I'm actually a Truebill user. I've been one for several years now, and it has helped me cancel so many of my unwanted subscriptions. Truebill has over 2 million users and has helped them save over $100 million, just like Matthew B., who says in a matter of seconds, I saved $660 for the year on my direct TV bill, saved $120 for the year on my Sirius XM bill, and saved $840 a year on my car insurance. Do not fall for those homophobic subscription scams, listener. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash Ashley. Go right now to Truebill.com slash Ashley. It could save you thousands of dollars a year. One more time, Truebill.com slash Ashley. Gay rights! Well, we have quite from you. You're still eating. It's a good-ass cookie. <laughs> You're getting crumbs on the mic. Let me just... Thank you. I woke up this morning, and 
I remembered having sex with somebody that I'd forgotten about for like three oh, you years. Want to tell a story? I don't remember the sex. I know we had sex like five times and I woke up this morning going, Kathy. <laughs> Was it my mom? <laughs> sure wasn't. Are you sure? We've got both parents Kathy. in on this now. <laughs> That's so funny. Kathy Gavin. <laughs> Is it C or K? C. It's my mom. <laughs> That's so funny to just wake up. I with woke a jolt. up and I because I recently made a list of everyone I've ever slept with because I want to I want to you know keep track yeah and I forgot to put her on it and we had a whole multi-month thing I always worry that I'm missing someone on my list right and it feels like so mean to miss someone because what if you were missed on someone's list yeah that'd be yeah. fucked up yeah I'd have a lot of questions mm -hmm. like oh you didn't like this yeah but like at a certain point life is long <laughs> some of these people were like 12 years ago anyway that's my queer sex <laughs> well, we're going to ask you some questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask me some questions. Welcome to Casey's Queer Question Corner. Any advice on coming during sex? It has not been successful for me with multiple partners. Yeah. Well, in a case where somebody is orgasming by themselves and they're not orgasming with partners, I mean, what that tells us right off the bat is that this is not a biological issue. This is not a medical problem, right? The, the body is capable of having an orgasm in this case. So what we're looking at instead is what are the factors that are different when a partner shows up than are happening when you're alone? Sometimes it's performance anxiety, right? Suddenly we're aware of our bodies in different ways. We're aware of the way that a partner is aware of our bodies. That takes focus away from the eroticism and, and keeps us in our heads. That can keep us from having an orgasm. The biggest thing probably is that the way that we touch ourselves when we're alone is different. I, I burped. I burped in the middle of it. I thought you were moved and that's why you put your hand to your chest. <laughs> no, I straight up burped and I'm just, I'm sorry. Oh no, gosh. it's all good. I'm happy. It was my birthday. I'm burping. Whatever. <laughs> so sue this me. It's a new brand. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so often the way that we touch ourselves when we're masturbating is different from the way that a partner touches us, right? Like most people with vulvas are using a vibrator or a hand and stimulating their clitoris when they're orgasming solo. But when they're with a partner... How do you do it, Casey? Hold on. But... <laughs> and both. Both. Canceled and I need help. <laughs> both. Double. <laughs> are you moving away from me? Just uncrossing and recrossing. Um, <laughs> anyway. Um, Your foot just tapped my shin. Can I finish this yes, one? Yes, I'm sorry. Can I'm I sorry, finish? It's an important it? question and we want everyone to be very happy. All right. And, and f fulfilled. Yes. With their partners. So most people touch their clitoris. You cannot keep a straight face when I say the word clitoris. I'm fine. Clitoris. clitoris. Stop it. Stop. Okay. Stop. Stop. Um, <laughs> and when people are <laughs> when people are with their partners usually they're having some kind of penetrative sex maybe they're having oral sex but often what a partner is not doing is stimulating the clitoris with their fingers or with a toy which is usually what's happening during masturbation so to bridge that gap you have to have the same kind of stimulation with a partner that you would when you're masturbating um which might might mean involving toy in masturbation it might mean um sort of setting the scene the same way that you would for yourself for, if you masturbate so for example if you're like always masturbating on your stomach in the dark and then you're having sex <laughs> and you're always on your back in bright light I and mean, this yeah. is an extreme example yeah. but the context has shifted i also just love the phrase if you're always masturbating and then not finishing the <laughs> sentence that's where i started to laugh listener if you're always masturbating i it's funny because i lost it at on your stomach in the dark <laughs> You know, people have all sorts of no, masturbation lots of girls, rituals. Lots of girls flash, masturbate on their stomach. I flash, I'm laughing because I flash back hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, remember how you forgot about Kathy? <laughs> oh, I, forgot this is about Kathy my, moment. I forgot about my on the stomach in the dark moments. My early sexual experience. And I feel very overwhelmed. It's making me oh. laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my Especially god. Especially because the way you said it makes it sound so scary. It's like you're in the saw dungeon, like masturbating on your stomach in the dark. No, <laughs> because Kate, Jigsaw told you to. Kate, that is Freudian. It's good leverage. There's it's nothing good leverage wrong with to masturbating be on, your on your stomach in the dark. 
Um, that's, that's I mean, great advice, though. Yeah, I mean, typically it's that the context has changed, the way you're stimulating yourself or are being stimulated has changed. If you're using a vibrator every single time you masturbate, it's really hard for a partner to repeat that level of stimulation for such a long length of time. So I recommend always mixing in masturbating with your hands every once in a while, even mm. even if you often use a vibrator, just so that like when you shift over to human touch, your body is more familiar with that. Robot touch, very good though. Very, very good. <laughs> um, I was gonna say also, I always, whenever I have a new partner, I ask them how they touch themselves. At what point? It, as soon as I meet them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate this idea, I just need hey, a little more here's context. Here's your sit down on a first date. <laughs> here's your book. Here's your book, how do you fuck yourself? Fuck you, fuck you for getting that joke out faster. Fuck you, fuck you. That was fuck great. Fuck you, I had it, I had it in the chamber. <laughs> I was gonna say, here's your copy of the War of Art. How do you match? How do you judge yourself? <laughs> now give me Valencia. <sighs> yeah, uh, no, like I, whenever I sleep with someone for the yeah. first time, I context is important and like assessing how people feel. But I always ask how people touch themselves because it's so helpful for me. Yeah, and fingering for life, bro. For life. <laughs> fingering for life i love fingering yeah people should be fingering more i love fingering i completely agree no matter what sexual orientation you are we need more fingering yeah what's another question my friend with benefits recently had a panic attack during sex we don't know what the trigger was any advice for managing this scenario well i think that we usually think of triggers as being so obvious and so visible you said something you did something and that caused me to you know, have a panic attack. But actually, I think especially with sex, triggers can be so much more subtle. Mm. It can be a smell, right? It can be a taste. It can be uh, a position. And because trauma is stored in the body, um, not necessarily consciously, Mm. the body can become triggered by one of those cues, even if you haven't consciously registered it as triggering. And I'm not saying that if you have a panic attack during sex, it's because of trauma. But, you know, most of the time it is related to some kind of trauma. That doesn't necessarily mean it's sexual trauma or abuse. It could be religious trauma that causes somebody to have a panic attack during sex, right? Like purity culture that causes immense anxiety when having sex, especially if you're having queer sex and grew up in this world where we're taught we're not supposed to have queer sex. Um it's really hard to prepare for the first time that it happens because if you don't know that it's coming you're unlikely to like ask a first date you know and how should i deal with it if you have a panic attack maybe right. you asked that question but <laughs> that's on my list that's right after that's the right question. after how do you touch yourself <laughs> Um, But if it does happen once and it's a friends with benefits situation where, you know, this might be a person that you're having sex with often, like coming up with a game plan for um, what would be most helpful from you if it were to happen again. Um, Some people want to pause and stop sex altogether. Some people just need like a second and then they want to, you know, get back into it. Um, But yeah, once it happens the first time, you can, you know, have have a little trauma informed conversation about it. Religious trauma did come up in a question you know advice around moving forward from religious trauma mm. and i'm i'm you, yeah. that feels also close to your personal narrative definitely yeah i mean i think that we right now have like some pretty narrow diagnoses in the dsm around how trauma manifests and they don't always account for things like religious trauma because you know, PTSD doesn't always fit the description for people who grew up in fundamentalist or sort of cult-like religious experiences or even non-cult-like religious experiences that were super homophobic. But it starts with recognizing and validating what the signs of trauma are because it's not going to be you hear a loud noise and it reminds you of a helicopter the way that we're taught that PTSD manifests. Mm. It can often be um, come up in interpersonal relationships. Um, you know, I think a lot of religions rely heavily on using vulnerability as a way to pull something out of people, right? Like if I tell you my story, my testimony, I will pull you to believing the same thing that I believe. And some people who suffer from religious trauma get triggered by vulnerability, like people wow. sharing wow. intensely vulnerable things. So the first step is learning to recognize some of the more nuanced ways that that can show up that we might not always associate with trauma. One of the most healing spaces will be a space with 
queer folks who have also experienced religious trauma just to have a conversation and be like, oh yeah, same, 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 right? The same way that the tr religious trauma happened in a community setting, I believe that the best healing will happen in, in a sort of opposite community setting. That was great. What else do we have? I recently started to unpack old sexual assault trauma and lost interest in sex with my girlfriend. Any advice on how to deal with such issues? I mean, that's so normal. It's so common that when you are in the processing stage of previous trauma, you would lose your sex drive. It's also normal that you might develop hypersexuality or have a really increased sex drive. Um, might be possible that you might start to have fantasies about the uh, the abuse that you experience. I mean, really anything is quote unquote normal when it comes to what might come up as you're processing trauma. And I think that what sometimes happens is people panic. They're like, oh my gosh, is this the new normal? Will I never want to have sex with my girlfriend again? And the answer is, you know, if you're if you're in therapy and you're in a process around this, no, like you will come, you will get to the other side of that. You will become more desensitized to that trauma. And as you move to the other side of that, like you will find yourself opening up again more often than not. And so just recognizing that this is temporary and there may need to just be conversations with the partner, maybe looping the partner into therapy around what to expect during this time that sex is just going to be harder and desire is just going to be less. There's no, no, I, we're like, we're like. There's, well, yeah, we our can't, skills, our skills are our useless. skills are useless in this scenario. totally right. Useless. There's been nothing you can. <laughs> yeah. Not even 9-11 can save trauma these. stored in the body. <laughs> you know what else is stored in my body? <laughs> nothing because I'm afraid of penetration. <laughs> That's good. That we got there. Yeah. What can I do? All right. What's a What's another what's another one? Casey, will you be Ashley's girlfriend? <laughs> not today, not today. I've I've I have named myself your work wife though. I feel like That's so it's just no, okay. It's you look like Christmas right now with the green oh, and the red. Oh. And I I would like to have you here for the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> the cookies are here too. It does feel like gloomy Christmas today. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a little depressing in here. Oh, in here specifically. Well, just <laughs> I'm also Christmas over here. I don't know. I just feel like we've been in our feelings today. You know, yeah. we've been we've been real. We've been really real. Yeah. I appreciate that. Well, it's also like I, I... <laughs> what's the next question, Alex? How do I feel gay and sexy when I can't eat pussy due to disabilities? Eating pussy is not what makes people gay. It's not right. There were yeah. a lot of is this gay? Yeah, nothing is this gay know, is not is this look, valid gay sex, blah, blah, blah. I think There's a lot of that. There are two really important truths that exist at the same time. One on one side, queerness has nothing to do with behavior, right? Hmm. On the other side, it is fun. It is connective to talk about all the things that are super gay. Right. And that's like part of how our community astrology is super gay. Right. Yeah. Sharing feelings is super gay. Now, those things aren't actually innately gay, but gay people tend to like to do them. So we enjoy <laughs> saying those things. But, it's you know, um, queerness has nothing to do with behavior. It's a it's a f internal felt sense of self. And some people will go their entire lives without having gay sex and it doesn't make them any less gay. There's no position that's gay. There's no type of sex that's gay. Um, if, you know, one or more person having the sexual experience is gay, then the sex is gay. Mm -hmm. A lot of straight men with bi wives. Just having a bunch just of really gay sex. zooming in on that, on that <laughs> quote right there. How many of them are watching this? I know at least one from Boston might hear this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Remember that couple? Yeah, I do. Oh, I love them. Look, yeah, people get great. to self-define, right? If a bi yes, person yeah. and a straight man don't feel like the sex they're having is gay, then fine, it's not gay. And that sucks, honestly. <laughs> Finger her. Finger her, please. But I, I really do appreciate that point of view that you said that even if you're just by yourself or even if your sex life looks different than someone else's it's it's all queer because the queerness is inherent to who you yeah, are yeah i mean i was queer when i was five but i didn't have sex till i was 19 like right. it's yeah it's not about behavior. that was probably the queerest period of my life yeah running around without <laughs> a shirt on just shorts 
very Definitely. very queer i can't do that today <laughs> you could but <laughs> so i guess our answer depends to, on the, to the listener is it it doesn't matter if, if you can't eat pussy just count some crystals <laughs> look up your horoscope you're gay you're gay you're gay <laughs> um just kidding of course i liked your sincere answer yeah we're in it today yeah this is a this we're is a very it. different episode than the last one we did yeah super different but that's how relationships change casey you know that's sometimes right. things are challenging there are, ups, there are downs yeah sometimes yeah you're never really together <laughs> <laughs> sometimes the woman that you love has a excuse me what i'm just breathing <laughs> all right (laughs) what's next one more let's do one more any tips for trans sex when you have bottom dysphoria couple things so one you don't have to take your clothes off if you don't want to if there are certain types of clothing whether it's like leaving on loose boxers or something while having sex if that helps you feel more euphoric or less dysphoric like breaking free of the idea that sex always has to happen completely naked that's the first thing i love clothes on sex yeah it's, it can be really hot yeah right and it can mitigate feelings of dysphoria um i think another you have found ways to make jokes during some pretty serious <laughs> i'll give you that <laughs> i don't think yours was a joke i was, it was a just joke. a great delivery was... <laughs> <laughs> it was awkward timing but i meant it yeah 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 i didn't know what upskirt was i, I now understand oh sorry yeah <laughs> it was a little bit of a weird like up, i mean like, if you yeah. if you want to feel if you right? if yeah. you want to feel really like feminine and you want to keep clothes on you could always get fucked up like your skirt if you want to feel feminine and you want to keep uh, keep your clothes on <laughs> I would never want to do this, but uh, upskirt, upskirt. That's and that's what they call it, right? <sighs> but it's a great point, right? Leaving, putting a skirt on, leaving. Uh, whatever depending on what type of bottom dysphoria you have right like grounding yourself in some object or some piece of clothing that that helps you feel grounded and euphoric having the conversations around what you like those parts of your body called or if you prefer not to have them called anything at all like you have a right to ask for them to be called whatever they are called for you um i think too like allowing yourself to fantasize is so big i think we're often taught that we like the only way we can really have connective sex is with if we're focusing on exactly who's in front of us and present in our bodies i think it is perfectly okay and healthy to have sex that is fantasy driven even if the fantasy isn't about the body that you have in front of you or about the person that's in front of you like do you ever I think find it's fine. yourself fantasizing about i knew this was coming oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> maybe maybe she's on stage <laughs> <laughs> i'm whistling because i've been taking silent deep breaths to compose myself and you told me you needed audio so instead i'm just taking my deep breaths directly into the whistle. <laughs> you don't have to answer it i'm just putting it out there as a question to be pondered i will ponder it here's something that i've struggled cool. with with that Sorry. with the fantasy element it was like very helpful at first mm-hmm. and now it's like i've i've created a schism between the body i actually have and the body that i imagine that is the one having sex yeah it, like would you call that dysphoria or is it something beyond that for you i don't know because that often is what dysphoria is right like yeah. the discrepancy between the the body you imagine yourself having or like feel would feel best for you and the body that you see in the mirror in front of you that can be one experience of dysphoria i guess i i guess it was dysphoria that drove me to pursue Mm -hmm. the fantasy yeah which worked at first and now it's almost like sex is less fulfilling because Mm. i've like you feel like dissociated almost yeah that's really hard i i don't have i'd have to ask a lot more questions yeah that's fair i'm just trying to get free therapy (laughs) (laughs) what if you come back every week what if if we just (laughs) And what Ashley's not week? here and No, Ashley's here. You get to process, profess your love and I get to just have therapy. <laughs> Does that make it feel like a more equal dream? Yes. <laughs> just kidding. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Great questions from our listeners. Yeah, I learned a lot. We I learned a ton. The way you speak about things is it's like very impressive to watch. You're thank so thoughtful you. and you cover all the bases. Thank you. Kate, did you have gay sex this week? Uh, I the thoughts have been wiped from my brain. 
I um mm-hmm. I I finally I finally oh uh, I finally watched porn. What? Are you joking? No. That's huge. I don't man. think I n- have yeah. enough context to scream about it. I'd never watched it before. I've seen porn accidentally. <laughs> Get I've, out of oh here. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I had to shoot my shot. The nook was open. <laughs> Ashley tried to slide under Casey's arm. You gotta go into the nook. (laughs) Just felt close to you after our previous conversation. I know. It's okay. That's why I keep myself closed off, Casey. Because every time we feel close, every time I feel close to you, I remember that you haven't had gay sex with your girlfriend this week. Oh, gosh. I knew this was going to become a thing. So did she. She was like, lie. (laughs) (laughs) Lie. Wait, did you have gay sex with, and you lied to me about it? No, no, no. Oh. She was like, she do not give that. Yes. Do not give her anything. <laughs> wow. Oh, that makes it that makes it very real. I'm sure that your partner and you have the best sex ever, far greater than I could ever give to you, even though I'm somewhat of an expert and well known for it. Well known for it. I actually I guess that's not Is true. that what you're known for? <laughs> I'm well known for joking about my Across gay sex. Across the land, the lassies talk of my magical fingers. <laughs> magical fingers. Bringing them joy every day from January to December. I never stop working the magic of these magical fingers. <laughs> High and low, they sing songs of my mythical prowess in the bedroom. You can lie face down in the dark on your stomach on me. <laughs> Hey, hey, the Ashley girl is back. Hey, 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 lay down on your back. The Ashley girl is into town. Spread it high, spread it round. The Ashley girl is here, so hide your kids, hide your wife. (laughs) That was beautiful. Thank you. So the porn. (laughs) So the porn. Uh, that would make a great porno what you just described i would like to see the porn version of that oh my god golden fingers i inherited a shillelagh from my great grandfather (laughs) well what should i go get it a walking stick an irish walking stick that's so funny it's beautiful i bet old (laughs) that is the molding of my dead (laughs) father's Passed down through generation, generation to generation. Oh man, oh man. That was one of the funniest things that has ever happened on this podcast. <laughs> anyway, porn. I don't know. I feel like I earned the right not to talk about this. You did. Oh, would you rather not? No, no, no. I'm just teasing myself. I never watched porn. I had tried to. I had tried to watch with uh, partners, and it. I would see like one second of it and be. Uh, I didn't like it. Uh, I have a fear about people having sex near me or jacking off near me and porn can sometimes feel like that. Yeah. I don't like nudity without intimacy and the fact that this has already happened and the people aren't in the room with me like freaks me out. Mm-hmm. And also everything I've heard about porn is that it's stupid and bad. <laughs> like, like that the women are always fake screaming and that a lot of it's like violent and it's, there's like scary Stereotypical things. Stereotypical male gaze, porn hubby type porn. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's what I'm referring to. I'm cancel coaching this. And so, yeah, thank you. <laughs> and so, and a few months ago I was, I wanted to watch a guy jack off. And so I went on, we talked about this on the Anna episode where I, I typed it into Pornhub and then like a flash ad came up and it was like, want to jack off with other dudes? And just that flash pop-up ad was like affirming enough that I was like, I'm done. <laughs> I like clicked out of the website. <laughs> That's incredible. But so then it's I It's a really guess- good podcast. You should listen to it. <laughs> Someone would say that Ashley Gavin is sort of the St. Patrick of, <laughs> of clits. <laughs> She drove all the quits out of Ireland <laughs> and into this studio apartment. I thought you were going to say it into her mouth. And also into my mouth. <sighs> uh, it um, and it was the same as my other attempt is that I just wanted to see, I didn't want produced porn. I just wanted to watch a random guy jacking off for fun. But it was that it was like so affirming. It was like other dudes like... 
you yeah. were being seen as a dude by the porn site right and that was enough and that was enough yeah. for a while and yeah. then i was like okay no i actually want to see this <laughs> And I haven't seen like semen come out of a dick in a really long time. And that was a compelling part. Of, mm. uh, just to get fr- freshened up on it. <laughs> what? Just to like be remember <laughs> from like a scientific pers- perspective. I thought you meant that I was <laughs> for some reason I had an image of me rubbing the semen into my face to like freshen up. Yeah, like a Neutrogena like a, commercial. Like a Neutrogena, <laughs> yeah. No, I don't know. I think it's a really interesting, erotic, fascinating thing to see. And my partner right now doesn't have a penis. And so I, I don't see it anymore. Cool. Mm-hmm. I'm totally fine with that. What? A cum freaks me out. And I'm not going to yuck your yum. <laughs> Go on. Oh. I know. Oh, I hate that. You song. know what is gross? All the different words for. There's a lot. Especially like penis cum. Like all the different words. Penis cum. As penis opposed to cum. vagina cum. No, well, one like, time I was like at when an people open mic- call it like creaming Ugh. Ugh. i've always thought of that as a as a vaginal thing um anyway it's probably erotic to me because there's a sense of longing there yeah for sure uh, but so i finally watched uh guys j- jacking off on their twitter accounts and on their twitter accounts yeah yeah because i didn't want it to be like a porn site yeah and oh, i yeah and i didn't want it to be like somebody's like work right i want it to be just, just real like life. another freak on the internet Yep. J and O. Yep. J and O. <laughs> Maybe that's weirder. I don't know. I don't think it's weird at all. What anyway, what kind of guys do you think I watch Jack off? <laughs> Twinks. What about you? Neil Rubenstein. I got it. I mean not him specifically. Weird weird to mention Big a friend of ours. Motorcycle <laughs> bear older tattoo. Yeah. Big, big, big guys. Yeah. Harry. Harry. Mm, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then some just like models, you know. <laughs> you got to throw those in there. You got to throw those in there. Yeah. <laughs> but no, the twinks made, I find that the twinks made me nervous because I can never tell how old they are. Uh, <laughs> that's, no, that's really fair. So you went the opposite direction. You were like ancient, as <laughs> old as possible. Well, it's reassuring, but I think it's less about like, this is the kind of man that I would fuck and more like this, like, let's look for an equivalent. Of, that's what I, that's, that's why I yeah, said. Yeah, that was smart. Yeah. That was smart. So there are days, so there Thank are days welcome. when I'm looking at someone like, you know, I could be, just I could, like, <laughs> whatever. Sorry. I'm so sorry. We lost. Oh, no, no, it doesn't matter. Listening. But keep having your you little combo. Too. Wow. <laughs> you are so beautiful. Okay. <laughs> Go on. I didn't hear really any of that. But... <laughs> I don't know what she just said. <laughs> I was just muttering to herself, <laughs> making eye contact with you as if it's a conversation. And you're just like, uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is a popular you're, podcast. You're there. There. No, I'm here for this. Okay. I'm here for it. Okay. And I was there for it. Okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm just more vocal. Yeah, me, you're more vocal. Because I can be. Go on, go on. I am be- I have to be beat red. I can feel it in my face. <laughs> oh, you're hot? I'm hot. Mm, fever. This is, this, <sighs> honestly, at this point, I feel like I'm just filling the air so that nothing bad happens. But uh, I, sometimes. We can say goodbye. <laughs> Is this you saying Alex you want it to be over? Like, yeah, I think the episode might be over. If you're gonna, you're gonna have to mic him because otherwise, it's just yeah. sounds like you're just talking to, to <laughs> honestly to the wall. Me yelling at an imaginary cis straight white dude <laughs> just around like my thing. apartment is very on brand for me. <laughs> okay, anyway, whatever. But just so you know, yeah, you will always be my son. My mm. firstborn son. It's beautiful. Thank you. My cis straight white dude. <laughs> I'll never be cis. I'm. Oh yeah. God damn it. No, I'm not trying to catch you on that. I just like. No, but for the joke, I messed up the joke. I don't care about your identity. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly the, not. You don't even want to hear how I'm projecting myself onto these Twitter freaks. So I, bears, like a mus, like a muscly, like kind of built. Mm-hmm. Typical. I would guess tip, like a mm-hmm. socially hot guy is socially so, is how i, I like aspire to be sometimes and then like kind of like fat ottery bearish guys yeah older i guess just because that's kind of the type of people who are i don't know yeah that makes sense well thank you kate that was very vulnerable thank you and super freudian i guess it's not freudian as much as it's self-reflection yeah it just makes sense i mean <laughs> ask about her dad <laughs> no no, I'm not gonna ask about her dad. Okay, that's Another for time. next week. That's for next session. 
You got it out faster again. I fucking hate you. I'm I'm distracted. <laughs> yeah, clearly. Well, what a great episode this turned into. Yes. So many different. The song saved it. <laughs> the song was a big part of it. It's funny because I was listening to Casey's answers and I was like, damn, this is a podcast. Like you're, it was just like really thoughtful new information that people are going to be like, you know what I heard on the podcast on a podcast the other day. That's true. Yeah. Whereas in a normal episode, they're like, you know what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> People are always like, I was trying to hide the fact that I was listening to it. It's like I know. literally the opposite of podcast listening behavior. <laughs> it's, so, it's so frustrating because one of the <laughs> listener, I don't know if you know this, but the number one way people hear about podcasts is word friends. of mouth. And you guys are like, I can't let anyone fucking know that I listen to this podcast. And I know I did that to myself with the name. Come on, guys. Word of pussy eating mouth here. <laughs> Let's go. Or dick eating. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever, Whatever. you eat it's okay your little gay mouths spread the gay word butt plugs my nickname <laughs> <laughs> anything you want to plug yeah in my instagram queer sex therapy and if you want therapy uh www.theexpansivegroup.com and you do want therapy we you all do. want therapy it is one of the best things that you can do for yourself mm -hmm. if it's an option for you take it there's a take it joke but i'm not gonna make it <laughs> <laughs> bend over and take it take, <laughs> bend over and take this take therapy it, you little bitch take it like the mattress did in the dark when you laid down <laughs> <on top of laughs> it. guys i got a really moving um message recently um on our discord we we have a discord the link is in my website ashleygavin.com and someone posted this and they gave me permission to to tell it and i i just loved it um so much uh they messaged that they used my pickup line you might remember it from a previous episode i don't remember which one but my pickup line is are you gay enough for me to buy you a drink when i'm not sure if this person is queer i think they might be queer i'm not sure i definitely don't want to put any pressure on them it's just kind of a funny little line um and this story is about using that line i went on a date with this beautiful cis woman I only mention that she's cis because I'm trans and it's been incredibly difficult navigating the dating world as a trans woman. Anyways, I was nervous meeting her at first because of how beautiful she was and I couldn't stop thinking, why would she want anything to do with me? But I realized on our first date, we actually had plenty in common and felt a mutual connection. So fast forward to the second date, we're at one of my favorite bars and I bring up the podcast and I mention the pickup line and how great I think it is. She agrees and continues with the idea, saying it's such a cool tool, you could use it for lots of different stuff in a dating context. Cut to a couple minutes later, and I ask, are you gay enough to hold my hand? She says yes, and I'm lighting up on the inside, holding her hand. Cut to later, the date's wrapping up, and she's walking me back to my car. We share a hug and are looking into each other's eyes with that awkward pause. So I ask, are you gay enough to share a kiss? She says yes, and it was magical. It was one of the most beautiful first kiss experiences I've ever had. All right, I'm fine. I'm fine. Woo! Have a great week, everybody. Uh, Patreon.com slash WHGS. <laughs> <laughs>